exponent transforms. So, uh, hopefully you guys have watched the video from Desmos.com already, um, where I just kind of tried to illustrate what the different letters within the generic formula for an exponent do. So you should be familiar with the fact that the C, this is going to be your shift up slash down, and this is also the tail, which is actually an asymptote. Um, this is going to be your rate, so it tells us how steep it is, and whether it's increasing or decreasing. Keep in mind if it's increasing, b will be greater than 1. If it's decreasing, b will be less than 1. And up the front, we have the initial oops, amount. So, um, the tail, and in this case, the tail is always going to be an asymptote. We'll talk about that with hyperbola as well, the hyperbola graphs. But an asymptote is a line that the graph kind of approaches, but it never actually gets to. So it won't actually cross that line, but it will get really, really, really close to it. And our equation for the, in this case, always going to be a horizontal asymptote, um, meaning horizontal like this. You can see the blue graph comes down and it gets close to 3, but it will never actually touch the line 3 there. The horizontal asymptotes, the equations for those are always y equals something. So, let's take a look at um, our graph and our graphs that are given and try to write the equations for these. And we'll look at the... maybe we'll look at the red one first. So the first thing I want to do is actually find the tail or find the horizontal asymptote. And you can see here that the graph is leveling off to zero, so that tells me c is equal to zero. The next thing I'm going to look for is going to be finding a, or the initial amount. And I can use a formula for that, which is the y-intercept minus c. And here, my y-intercept is 3, and c is 0, so 3 minus 0 is just going to be 3. So for the red equation, for the red graph, our c is equal to 0, our a is equal to 3 minus 0, so that's just equal to 3. And the b, finding the rate, what we're going to do is from the y-axis, from the y-intercept, um, we're going to move over 1 in the x-direction and count to see how many spots we have to go up until we hit the graph again. So here we go over 1 and you notice we go up 1, 2, 3. And then from there go over 1 again and count up. How many do you go up? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And from there go over 1 and again count up. How many are you going to go up? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Probably could have guessed what that was going to be. And here you're going to look for the pattern. So to find b for the changes in y, which are these ones, 3, 6, 12, think about what we had to times by or divide by to get to each of those numbers. So in this case, 3 times 2 gets you 6, times 2 gets you 12. The next one you might predict would be 24. So indeed, that was the times 2 here. So your b is going to be equal to 2 because it's doubling every single time. Okay, so to write our equation, we're literally just going to substitute in the a, the b, and the c that we've found. So y is going to be equal to a, which is 3, times b, which is 2, to the power of x, and plus 0. Now you don't actually have to write the plus 0, but I just wanted to show that the c is 0. So indeed, you can actually leave that off if you want. And an important key feature here to point out would be our y-intercept. And the y-intercept here is at the point 0, 3. And our horizontal asymptote this line that it kind of levels off to, you'll notice, is actually on the x-axis. And to get the equation for that, we want to know what's the value of y along that line, because it never changes. So anywhere on that line, y is equal to 0. So the equation for my horizontal asymptote will be y equal to 0. And those are the key features for that graph. Let's take a look at the blue one. 
Um, here, again, starting with the basics, let's go and find that tail, the asymptote there, and that c is equal to 3, positive 3 in this case. So c is equal to 3. To find a, we're going to look for the y-intercept, which is at 4. And we're going to go 4 minus c. So 4 minus 3 gives us 1. My a is equal to 1. b, again here I'm going to move over 1 from the y-intercept and then figure out how many I have to go up to hit that graph again. Now, for these positive ones that are, sorry, these increasing ones that are getting bigger to the right, I just move to the right, but for this one that's actually been decreasing, I'll move to the left instead. So for instance, from here I'm going to go over 1 and up 1. And I'll go over one more, and in this case I go up 2. Over one more, 1, 2, 3, 4. Can you predict what's going to happen here? Over 1 and up should be 8. And if you were going to predict again, you would see that it would be 16. So how am I actually going between these numbers? It's easy to think that I'm noticing 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, but that's kind of in a backwards direction. You want to think, how am I getting to the next number as you'd read, like from left to right? So how, in fact, would I get from 8 to 4, and from 4 to 2, and from 2 to 1? In this case, I'm dividing by 2 each time. So you can think about that as dividing by 2, which is the same as timesing by a half. So we can say we're timesing by a half, or if you want, timesing by 0 0.5, so you don't have to write the fraction. So b here would be 0 0.5, or 1 half. So substituting, substituting into our equation, we're going to have y is equal to a, which is 1, times b, which is 0 0.5, to the power of x, don't forget the power of x there, and plus c, which in this case is 3. And because it's 1 times something, 1 times something doesn't change it. You don't actually have to write that 1 times if you don't want to, so you could leave that part off. Looking for key features again, my y-intercept on this particular graph is going to be at 0, 4, and my horizontal asymptote, or the tail that it levels off to, is going to be at, what is the value of y along that line? It never changes. The value of y along that line is 3, so it's y equals 3. It's always going to be at the end. You'll notice that that plus c is actually going to be your horizontal asymptote every time. Okay. Looking at the green one. First step again, looking for the tail, or the horizontal asymptote, and here I see that c is equal to negative 2. So for the green graph, c is equal to negative 2. a is going to be equal to the y-intercept. And it's a bit hard to read on this scale, but I do know, because I made the graph, that that's actually a half, halfway between. So that's at negative 1 half. So again, that's the y-intercept, is negative 1.5. That's the y-intercept. And we're going to go minus c. So minus c is negative 2, so minus a minus, which really becomes a positive, so that's negative 1 half plus 2, and that's going to be equal to 0 0.5. So my initial value here is actually 0 0.5, the a is a 0 0.5. And looking to find b, again this is an increasing graph, so I'll move to the right, so over 1 and up 1, so from negative 1 half to negative half, that's a distance of 1, over 1, up 1, 2, 3, over 1, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That one goes up 9 before it crosses. And if you look up before I even start counting, you'll notice that I don't actually cross the next, li the next line there, so there's no point in counting up. Um, but I can think about how did I get between each of these numbers. So, um, to go from 1 to 3, that's a times 3, and to go from 3 to 9, that's also a times 3. So here I'm just going to assume that the next one would have been 27, 9 times 3. So my b is going to be 3. Plugging in, y is equal to a, which is 0 0.5, times b, which is 3, 
to the power of x, and in this case c is negative, so I'll just say minus 2. That would be your equation. Key features would be your y-intercept, which in this case is at 0, comma, negative 1.5. And your horizontal asymptote, or the tail where it levels off, is going to be, in this case, y is equal to negative 2. So it's the same number to c, and you can see it levels off. It almost gets to y equals negative 2, but it will never actually get there. Never touch it or cross it. So remember, if you're given an equation, you can actually identify a lot of the information, but from the graph, you can also work backwards to find out what the equation might be. Starting with c, finding the horizontal asymptote, or the tail, going to your y-intercept, where you can find the y-intercept and subtract c from that to get your a value. And for b, looking for the pattern. What do you have to times by or divide by to get between the numbers? And remember, you kind of want to do that in the direction of left to right. 